All right, so our next model that we're going to go ahead and make is a nail to hold these boards together. We started off with the board, and for the most part, all we used was our rotate tool, which is E, um, our scale tool, and our translate tool, with a little bit of our bevel, bevel tool, which is over here in our modeling toolkit. Now the next one is going to be extrude and multi-cut. These are the two new tools that we're going to go ahead and add in. We talked about these earlier, um, but this should give you a slightly better understanding of how we're going to use these, or at least how I use these to make this nail. So again, we're going to start off with a simple cube. I'm going to insert the cube from the primitives deck up here. Then I'm going to come over here to my attribute editor and I'm going to stretch him out just a little bit in his height. I'm going to grab this and let's go ahead and make him, let's just say, two. That looks good. Pan around, make sure that looks tall enough to go through a board or so. Good. Alright, then I'm going to pair the size of this nail down because that's a huge nail. So I'm going to say width is 0.25 and depth is 0.25. Alright, that's looking a little bit better. It's still a big nail, but we'll get to that. Alright, from here, let's go ahead and add some divisions into the height. But we're going to do it instead of using our attribute editor uh, which would allow us to increase the number of divisions we have in our height pretty simply I'm going to go ahead and use a new tool I'm going to use our multi-cut tool from the front perspective All right. I'm going to select my multi-cut tool I'm going to come over to my new nail, my new model. And I've decided that I want to make a head to this nail, so I'm going to left click outside, hold down shift, and just draw a straight line across. When I release, it inserts a new division right here uh, where I drew the line. I'm going to do that a few more times just so I can make some bends inside this model. All right. It's going to be a low poly model, so it's not going to need to be too um, intricate. And it's a nail, so it's not uh, anything that's going to be seen in high res anyway. All right, so we have this. Now, most nails have a rounded feature to them, so we're going to go ahead and take this top and uh, extrude them out but not until we've done a little bit more um, to make sure he, he looks round. Right now it looks like a box, right? So I'm going to come right back to the front. I'm going to divide this thing straight down the center. So I'm going to do the same as I did before, but now from top to bottom. Then I'm going to come over here to my side perspective, and I'm going to do the same thing. Zoom in, start in the center line, hold down shift, left click, drag. There we go. Now, I'm going to go over here to the top perspective. You can't see where this is at because it's not focused. The camera is not focused in the top perspective on the nail. So I'm going to hit F, pull myself back. All right. Now I can see him. I'm going to hit Q to go to select. That way I'm not still in my multi-cut tool. Right click, go to vertex, and let's go from here. Um, actually, let's go to the perspective tool real fast, or per perspective view real fast. And I'm going to go actually to faces. And I guess it doesn't really much matter. We can do this all from top view first. Okay. So we're going to stay here. I'm going to grab a 
of these vertices by just left clicking and dragging a marquee box. And then I'm going to hold down shift and add these ones and these ones. All right. Now, if I look in perspective, you can see it's selected all the way down. All right. That's because right over here, my camera base selection is turned off. So I'm going to go back in the top view. I'm just going to round this out off a little bit using my scale. So I'm going to hit R for scale. And I'm going to pull down a little bit. And then I'm going to pull on my X a little bit. There you go. So that's looking a little bit more round. All right. So let's come back out. Let's go over here. Good. Now I'm going to right click, hold, come down to face face, sub-object mode, and I'm going to select the marquee, left click and drag straight across. Now, the next thing I need to do is go ahead and make the head for this nail. I'm going to do that while I have these faces selected by hitting my extrude, going back out to my top view, selecting my scale with R, and then expanding outward. All right. That'll probably do it. Come back out. Good. All right, now it's looking kind of like a bolt, not so much like a nail, but we'll get to that. All right. So to fix that appearance issue, I'm just going to grab all of these, and I'm going to hold down Shift and highlight these guys right here. That got rid of the selection. All right. Now I'm going to use my scale, scale down, thin the head of the nail up a little bit. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to right click hold, go to vertex mode, grab the center vertex, go to my translate tool, which is W, and then pull him down. All right. Now, voila, we have what's starting to look like a nail. Now, let's make this nail look a little more beat up. So I'm going to grab all these. I'm going to scale these in just a touch. Oops. Accidentally uh, grabbed my timeline down there. And then I'm going to grab this guy right here and go to my W key, which is my translate. I'm going to add a little bend. So this, this nail's kind of been through some stuff. It's been hammered in, pulled out maybe a couple times. Alright, so now we got it all bent up now. At least mildly bent up. Let's go ahead and move these up just a little bit. Even that spacing out. That'll help when we UV this. Looks pretty good. We can actually thicken up the head of the nail a little bit. I'm going to grab this and pull this up just a touch. The reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to widen this guy out just a little, make the nail head just a touch bigger, and do some bevels on it. Over exaggerate it just a bit. I'm going to grab my faces again, just the side faces here. I'm going to hit my R and expand out one more time. Just a little bit. No need to extrude, just scaling. All right. From here, I can bevel these edges straight off like so. I can hit bevel. And because I have all the edges selected around, it's going to select the edges on top and bottom, but not the connecting edges, which is what I'm looking for. All right. So now it looks a little bit more beat up. I'm also going to make this look a little more hand hammered. I'm going to come in here, select faces, make sure that's selected. Grab these top faces, go to my translate, and just move those up just a bit. All right. Looks pretty good. And I'll right click again. Go to object mode. I 
think for the most part we're done here. Stick this to the side and wait for the UVs. It's pretty ginormous in comparison to my board, which means overall we need to scale this thing down. This were in the board. Like so we can still get into the next thing, which is nice. Alright. We can make it just a touch longer. It's always good when you're building sets to have an idea of what your scale is in relation to everything else that you're using those models with, all right? In this, I'm wanting things to be obvious and have a chunky feel to them, so I'm keeping the nails slightly larger than they would be in real life in relation to the board. All right. 